Alright, thanks for watching. And today I would like to do a really cool exercise in linear algebra, which probably has lots of cool applications as well. So, here's the idea. Suppose you take a matrix A, and then you row reduce it to get the reduced row echelon form. And suppose for some reason you delete that matrix and you don't know where it is anymore. The question is, if you only have the reduced row echelon form, can you reconstruct your original matrix? And we'll see, we actually can if we have some partial information. So suppose you have the following matrix. A prime, which is 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 2, 0, 3, is the row reduced echelon form of A. And we can actually find A if we know what its pivot columns are. So find A if the columns 1, 3, 4, of A are as follows. And I was very creative. I just said 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So in other words, if you know, so suppose you row reduce, you don't know what the matrix A is anymore, but if you know its pivot columns, we can actually reconstruct the matrix A. So this is really cool, and I bet there's some application in data science or statistics or something where we lose some info and then we recover it. Just like you delete a file and then you can recover it from your computer or something. So what do we know? Well, luckily we have some answers. We know that A is a matrix. The first column is 1, 2, 3. The second column is we don't know yet. Then we have 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8, 9, and something else. And again, the reason I chose 1, 3, and 4, it's because those are the pivot columns. Now, here's the cool thing, and I talked this in another video. The nice thing about reduced row echelon form is that it not only preserves linear independence, but it also preserves linear dependence relations. In particular, notice what we have here. The second column equals two times the first column of the reduced row echelon form. Well, guess what? The same thing is true for A, namely, because in the RREF of A, we have column two equals two times column of one, we also know that the second column of A it's two times the first column of A. So to figure out this column, just multiply the first one by two, and you get two, four, six. And what about here? Notice, and this is always true, the non-pivot columns are always linear combos of the pivot columns. So uh, this case, two, zero, three, it's two times the first column plus three times the fourth column. So this is still true here. We get two times the first column plus three times the fourth column, which here becomes, so two times one, two, three, plus three times a seven, eight, nine. And let's see, so 21 plus two, it's 23. Now 4 plus 24, that's 28. And then 6 plus 27, that's 33. So this column will be uh, 2, 23, 28, and 33. Ta-da! So you have recovered your matrix A uh, using the reduced row echelon form. And again, if you're curious why this is true, it's because uh, row reducing is like multiplying by invertible matrix. So A prime is B A. And then if you say the columns of A prime are W1 up to W5, that equals B times the columns B1 up to B5. And this is just B times B1 up to B of V5. 
So what do we know? Wj equals bvj. And then it just relies on the fact. For example, here, w4, I guess w5, it's 2 times w1 uh, plus 3 times w4. And then to get vj, you multiply by v inverse. So v inverse vj, wj is vj. And so if you do B inverse on both sides, you get B inverse of W5, it's two times B inverse W1 plus three times B inverse W4. So V5, it's two V1 plus three V4. So in particular, the fifth column of A, which is V5, it's two times the first column plus three times the fourth column. So this is why, you know, very quickly, whoops, and uh, linear dependence relations are preserved. And this is what makes the reduced row echelon form so nice. So, um, all right, I hope you liked this little video. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.